All right, guys, how you doing? I'm Rabia. My name's Joss. And Joss has just come down to my house to visit me because he lives up the road. That's why. That's, <laughs> that's, that's as simple as it gets. I literally live... The one thing I didn't realise was that I live literally two minutes stroll away from Rob. Really? Yeah, literally. It's just round the corner from my house since he's moved. And then... Um, yeah, about five minutes stroll to yours, which I still drove because I, I started <laughs> yeah, walking. And I was like, a big hill to get home. <laughs> yeah. I was like, no, forget this. Fair. Well, I'm sure you all know Joss from Anderson's TV, albeit most recently he left Anderson's TV, bid them farewell, left on a journey with Guitar Bros, right? Yes, that is exactly what it is. Well, I wish you all the best, man. Thank you, sir. And uh, yeah, anyway, I invited Joss down to take a look at this brand new Hughes and Kettner Black Spirit 200. Because mm. you just went to... HQ, didn't you? Yeah, I had the opportunity to get a first look at it in Germany with mm. a bunch of other huge influencers. Um, there was me, there was Jack from Toxic X Eternity, he does like metal versions of uh, computer games. Oh, so sick. Jack was pretty sick. Henning was there, um, there was a bunch of other dudes. John Brown from Monuments was there and stuff, like churning out riffs. Um, so yeah, we got to do we got to do some bits with this, and um, yeah, I'm really excited for everyone to see those videos. They're really cool. Awesome. And when are they happening? Um, around about the seventh of September, I think so. Brilliant. Yeah. So I've done some other YouTube videos of Hughes and Kettner stuff. I did the Tube Meister and the Grand Meister Deluxe Forties, I believe. And I've always said I think they're great little amplifiers. And this is the newest addition to their arsenal. And I mean, you obviously know more about it than I do because you've been there and seen it yeah. all in production. But as far as I understand it, it's a new type of tube technology, which is, as you can see on the close-up, this little thing here. Yeah. Inside there is technology. No one is allowed to know what it is. <laughs> Not allowed to know. Yeah. yeah. But it's a new type of technology that, is, uh, that apparently the special feature of this amp is 200 watt solid state, but you can plug it into any... It's got cab simulation in it. Yes. But it has a red box, but then it also has a model of cab. It has, I think it's eight, eight. different cab models. Mm. But what the special feature is you can kind of plug it into any speaker system, can you? Yeah. Like full range, PA speakers, yeah, whatever. Yeah, exactly. So the cool thing was that when we were actually at HQ, the amp head was plugged into a 212. Right. But the, also the full range was plugged into like a front of house style thing as well. Right. So you could sit there playing it through the cab mm. and then we just switch a button and it would stop coming through the cab and come through the full range. So you could really understand how the amp worked in both situations. So I guess they're aiming it kind of at touring musicians that don't like this is a carry on size. It's really, really cool because it's super light as well. That's the, that is, as you said, that is one of the thing and not having the valves in there really mm. lends its hand to have being super super light yeah so as you know being a touring piece of equipment it's it's pretty damn cool well the fact yeah that you can run it on cabin stage up to 200 watts which is like enough oh, yeah. and then on top of that that can then be rooted to front of house so you don't even you don't even need to have a cab on stage because that is my main gripe with people bands that go direct but don't have a cab on stage right so if you're at the front so for instance when i saw i seen periphery twice when i saw them the first time they had cabs on stage mm. and you could get a full blast of their cab sounds but they'd also send the axe effects front of house right second time i saw them it was a big stage, but even if you were standing at the front, you were getting an earful more of drums than anything to do with their guitars. Because there's no cabs blaring out no, sound. Exactly. Yeah. So um, the guys in the middle and the back are having a great old time. <laughs> you're at the front like, where's the guitar? Where's the guitar? Where's the guitar? <laughs> yeah. That's all I'm there for, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's why having the capabilities of going both is a really, really cool mm. function. Yeah, well, I guess, and that's the kind of, the, the USP of this amp, the mm. Black Spirit, that I think, other than that, as you can see going on the close-up, much like the Grandmeister, it's got a load of built-in effects, uh, and and, the, and you and you work it the same way you would before. So this is your effects access button. So along the bottom, you've got your standard EQ and volume, gain, mass, sag, and all that stuff. But then when you when you bang on the effects access, it, it allows you to access all the top row of stuff. Mm -hmm. So like you've got reverb, delay, feedback, cab type, which is how you would then use the red box output on the back. But also, I'll do some sweeps of the back of the amp. You can um, change the output of the speaker out, can't you? Yeah. Between a guitar cab or a full range cab, which yeah. then engages the cab simulation of the red box. Yeah, because obviously if you're going into a guitar cab, you won't need all those different cab simulations. Yeah, and, it'll, and the cool thing is that it's still rooted, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, red box then is separate from... Yeah, so you can have them both going at the same time. That's, that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to swear. Really? Yeah. Um, I mean, other than that, like, you can still run it with the foot switch that uh, will show up on screen now. 
Uh, that is the same as the, the Grandmeister Tube Meister. It's a MIDI. It's a MIDI foot switch. So it's MIDI in, MIDI out, and you can uh, control the whole thing, store it up to I think it's 128 banks. Well, okay. Or presets, sorry. Right. Okay. So it's it's full on. Yeah. Um, you can name them all as well. Yeah. Yeah, which is sick. And then also there's a iPad app um, that's currently in beta testing, so we can't show you unfortunately today, but you'll be able to control it with Bluetooth. Mm. Um, so what they're doing is really, they're just appealing to the full range of customer, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, and the awesome thing was, while I was there, there was some blues guitar players there. There was Michael, who's like a serious blues guy. Mm. And, uh, there was Jay Leonard Jay, who's like a really tasty blues guy. And then there was me, who's doing the shredding thing. Mm -hmm. and Jack, who's doing the full metal riffing mm -hmm. thing. And it all sounded good. Mm. So it does cater to everyone they made sure to tell me as well um that it's f like all analog like yes. in terms of the way yeah. the tones are created yeah which is really cool and to be fair to Hughes and Kenner they've always tried to retain that that analog um feel and tone with any of the other amps mm. um and that's something I've always liked about them so yes we should get into it we should uh, so is there's four channels you've got clean crunch lead and ultra and then there's also an added boost mm. all foot switchable so if you want to store stuff on this amplifier, um, whatever preset you're on, if you start messing around with controls, hopefully you'll see on the close-up cam, when the light comes on, that means that's where that parameter was set to. Yeah. So anything above or below the light goes off, it means it's not the same sound that you had in the preset. Yeah. And then when that happens, so if the light comes on, that's where we were, if I move past it and then I hit store, that's how you do it, basically. That's yeah. how you store your sound. It's just so if you go from that channel to another channel and you forgot your settings on the previous one that you just did, you can go back to that channel, turn the knob slightly, and the light will flash up to dictate where you had it positioned so you remember every EQ. So what have you got with you, this oh, pink beauty? So um, recently, um, I am very, very proud to be um, a Kiesel endorsee. So uh, this is my, this is Miss Piggy. Um, <laughs> that's so my, good. Yeah, my, um, my Kiesel Osiris uh, headless model. So that's, that's what that is. That is Larry, man. It's, it's bitching. Yeah, loving it. Yeah, I love it. Uh, how to listen to it sounds great. I'm going to be using, for some clean stuff, I've got uh, the PRS Paul's guitar. Ugh. And then I'm also going to get a bit filthy with the ML3 beer baritone from Gosh. Chapman Guitars. So let's get into some tonage. All right, so we're going to start with some clean tones. Yeah. I'll, I guess I'll play, yeah. and then you can twiddle with knobs. Yeah. And uh, what was probably worth doing, because we'll capture it on the close-up, is Joss will jump into effects access and then start throwing in some digital effects whilst I'm playing. Mm. Um, so yeah, let's do it. I mean, that's a really nice sounding clean. The cool thing about it is that the one thing that I always come to realize is that just how uh, inspirational it is to have all of that on the, the front of the panel. Yeah. Because when you're playing guitar in general and you don't have like a really lovely selection of pedals mm. and you just got this sterile clean, mm. it's beautiful to play clean and it sounds amazing. But when you add the reverb and a touch of delay and stuff, all of a sudden you can you can put across a completely different feel. Yeah. And it's inspirational and vibey. Well, when you kick the reverb in, I was like, oh, yeah. There it is. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah, there it is, yeah. yeah. So, where, so you just added a few bits of reverb and delay at that point, and you're about to get into some modulation, right? Yeah. I'll carry on playing then. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. 
through the so effects good. for the songs. <laughs> oh man, get off it. Oh. oh, that was sick. And then last last one is tremolo. Okay, cool. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a lovely sound. Uh, like, I, I'm, I'm just playing. I'm not really concentrating on, on what you're doing. Mm. But when I'm playing, I'm going, oh, that feels good. That's nice. That yeah. feels nice. Everything sounds sweet to the ear. Yeah. Um, so yeah. The, the one thing as well that is set up, if you don't know, uh, with the Hughes and Kentner amplifiers, between this and the Grandmeister, mm -hmm. it's very much exactly the same sort of thing. So with the mod types where you can see chorus, phaser, flanger, tremolo. Um, when you're the furthest away from uh, the two dots that indicate your extremes, mm -hmm. so less and more, um, obviously to the furthest away from it, it's like a slow rate. Um, yeah. And obviously the more you get through it, the faster the rate becomes and the intensity is right next to it. Right. Okay, <laughs> sweet. Well, I guess that's... I'll probably dial in some more effects as we go along, but that's kind of how you use, um, in terms of dialing in effects, the front panel, as Josh showed you, and hopefully you got to see on the close-up cam. So at this point, we'll just go through the channels. So you want to take crunch? No, you're, you you go with crunch. All right. Yeah, continue as you are. Um, one thing to say at the moment, which we'll get into, um, but the sagging option was at about five. Um, do you want to get into the sagging now, seeing as yes, we yeah, should talk because about of sag. the clean and crunch setting, it's more prominent. Okay. Um, I th I think well, it's 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 prominent on all the channels, but it has a different vibe to it. So while you're on the clean, mm -hmm. I'm going to turn the sagging all the way down, um, and then I'll bring the sagging in, um, and then you can kind of hear it first, and then we can explain it. Yeah. Because it's definitely easier and nicer to hear it in action to begin with. Cool. <laughs> It's like a compressor, isn't it? Yeah, it gives that sort of vibe. Yeah. So, I mean, sagging is usually, I mean, it's it's to have that idea, especially on the lead and ultra sort of game things, to have that old school 100 watt plexi Marshall on full. Just cranked. Just cranked, yeah. yeah. I don't know the maths. I was explained all the science behind it, should I say. I was explained it at the H&K place like many a time, but it just, I just couldn't, I was like... I'm not um, an AM designer. <laughs> I yeah, don't understand. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But to me, on the clean side of things, yeah, it gives that aspect of a, a nice, for me in clean, it's like a confidence booster. Yeah, totally. That little bit of compression. That's the thing. Yeah, clean is very unforgiving. As soon as you throw a compressor in, suddenly it's like, oh, I can play. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, yeah. And that's, so that's a really, really lovely touch. And if we go to the crunch setting, okay. oof, I'll turn the sagging off again um, and I'll bring the sagging in um, and you can kind of, and then I'll just mess around with um, some more of the EQ with the crunch stuff. Sweet. Here we go. <laughs> Yes. Yes. That so first thing I want to say is the crunch sounds sick. Yeah. 
Um, second thing I want to say is we are running into a Universal Audio Ox box mm. uh, and then going straight to the Apollo, just so you know. And then we'll get into cab stuff later. Yeah. Um, but anyway, back to the crunch. I'm really, really digging the sound of that crunch. Yeah. I mean, it's the, the I, it, I added the boost a little bit into that as well. Mm. And even without seeing... You automatically sort of you can feel it. You're like, oh, a new saturation, of life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you can start tearing it a new one. So yeah. that's always really lovely as well. And the delay and reverb work really, really lovely mm. on it. It's not like as you were playing the single note lead stuff. Mm. It's not so much that it's it's like you know, post gain, right? Yeah. yeah. So you know when I uh, when you run a, a delay in the front and then you run a delay in the effects loop. Yeah. It's like for me, the effects loop delay is so much more controllable. Yeah, me I don't too. Have I to agree. Have the mix on like one. Yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. So I'm guessing they're rooting that post preamp. Yeah, I right? can only yeah. assume that it works that way because it's it just sounds you know, you can give the delay some and it's not like oh, overbearing. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wicked. Should we move on to some? Yeah. Heavier stuff. Yeah, for shell. Cool. So we're gonna do lead now, yes. and rightly. So, Joss is going to take it Hiya. away. Uh, I've set everything to 12 o'clock, and then I'm just going to mess around with the sag, with the controls, with the amount of gain, some effects, whatever. Cool. Take it away. Ah. <laughs> Sick. That was, that that was, was so, so legit. Good. <laughs> oh man, as soon as that flanger came in or phaser or whatever it was. Just 80s. Oh man, straight up 80s hair metal. So what I noticed was I was messing with the sag mm. and when you were doing the, drum, 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 the gallops, um, it sounded like the more you turn up the sag, every because it's compressing, there was yeah. less definition. I took it all the way out so it was wide open or what felt like wide openness and suddenly you were hearing all of those yeah. a lot better. So um, what you could do in theory because the so that's so that's the sagging off yeah mm -hmm. so with the sagging off as Rabir said so it's a lot more as you said more defined mm -hmm. but with the lead stuff I'd want a bit of the sagging so there's more sustain right yeah, yeah. so in theory what you could do is um, I don't know if on the app you can I mean on the app you can uh, you know to begin to bring in the sagging mm. but what you could do is you could have one channel especially if you're playing heavier stuff because that to me is more than enough gain for your lead tone but you could have one channel that's like this mm. and then your next channel that you switch to for a lead tone could be exactly the same but with just the sagging engaged so okay so for example just to demonstrate that yeah. if you do a bit of galloping yeah. and then go into a bit of lead okay <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You notice that 
like you can hear more noise when everything when you put the sag up suddenly everything squashes a bit yeah and then you just notice there was more chewiness and sustain exactly um, yeah, exactly and like you were saying you could you could create two presets identical but one with like sag on five and one with sag on zero yeah and just jump between that and maybe even throw in the boost for a bit of lead as well exactly so ah, just they always do it they always pack it full of features that you wouldn't consider until you sat in front of it and you go, oh, yeah, that's I really good idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, Sweet. exactly. Okay, shall we jump over to a bit of uh, Ultra? Ultra? Ultra being the full-on brown sound style gain, isn't yeah, it? It's just man. mega satch. Yeah. Eration. Eration. <laughs> 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 Cool, let's do Ultra, everything's 12, and I'll do the same thing again. Cool. So that was with was that even with the boost engaged? I didn't know. No, that well, that's was, how that's much gain how there much is. Gain there is on the on the ultra channel. Yeah, that was filth. Uh, yeah, and so I guess all right. Let's just demonstrate the mm. the boost then. So let me boost. just take away the all the effects. <laughs> So, I've knocked the gain right down, and what you heard just there was, do, if you do that again, and I'll tip the gain right down, so this is the low gain tone. Okay. Yeah, there's definitely a, a quite a considerable amount of gain added yeah. to that. Yeah. So that's all four modes. What yep. I'll do real quick to demonstrate some of the heavy stuff with riffage, uh, I'll grab the bazzer. Yeah. And, uh, uh, um, dust is mine and baritonian, and dust is mine and EQN. Here we go. <laughs> That is, I tell you what, that's a touch more treble. Mm. Everything else at 12, and the presence is just a little touch over 12 o'clock and the Renaissance, <laughs> and the resonance is at 12 as well. <laughs> renaissance! <laughs> I don't know why I read it like that. Um, and the boost was engaged, but this was without the boost. Okay. Still, I mean, I don't know if I've got... Um, the noise gate is now is not engaged. I mean, that is quiet. It is quiet, isn't it? And it's still tight. Brutal. I mean, you could you you could bring up the gain a touch without the boost. Me. <laughs> 
Okay. But, so I, I, that's a. I think that's a really, really good setting. Um, it's but, thick. It's very American voiced overdrive, isn't exactly, it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, if we want to touch more, let's go to the Ultra and just see how it handles. Because, I mean, it would be interesting to know anyway with the, this amount of saturation that's on tap. All so right. Turned off. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. <laughs> and then I wasn't sure. But yeah, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's. It's thick. okay. Um, man, what a nice sound! That really Especially is. Especially with that man, it just makes you want to get like a baritone or a seven. The thing is, right, I really want a seven string, but yeah. I was scared of it, right? From the extra string. Exactly, but then yeah. someone told me just tune the. Oh, the higher one. No, keep the E, um, but tune the G. Um, I think down a half step right and then you've got yourself a baritone standard B string guitar but with a high E oh wow and I tried it and it was alright was it it was just then you can play mm. all your standard shapes that you know and love mm. but you just add the high E in to the scale that may have changed my world the only reason that I well not the only reason but no. one of the main reasons for doing a baritone for me was I can't play a seven string. Well, basically, Rob uh, went over Rob's house and we shot a video together recently mm. and he gave me this unicorn seven string challenge. Yeah. And um, he said, basically, like, he doesn't play, I don't play, try this. And I'd done the tuning thing. Yeah. And I could play the seven string. Oh, wow. And it was literally because, you know, the, the the only thing that you got into your head then. Because with the seven string, the only thing I have in my head is I'm always like, oh, the B is not my E string. Yeah. But now, with that little... Because you tune that string up in fourth, mm. so the whole guitar is tuned up like that. It's always the sp it's always the fact that I feel like I'm a string ahead of where I should be. Exactly. Yeah. So now with that little augmented change, you just run your standard pentatonics, but from the B string, and then you've got a higher E string instead. Fair. Mm. And that is a little extra tip in this video that I didn't expect. There you go. Well, that's all the modes. Yeah. I think. It's needless Phrygian, to say, it sounds fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, Ketnian. Ketnian. Um, it sounds immense. It does. And it's catering for what I would consider to be a full range of players. Yes. You can do the push clean, you can do the spanky clean, you can do the the hard rock, then the shred, then the riffage, and then, of course, the prog metal yep. filth. Um, so really, and then, of course, the, the effects, the, they sound great, mm -hmm. as did as they did in the Grandmeister, etc. Um and if, yeah, so really what we should probably do now is just go over to the red box yes. and show you how the cab models work. So we're going to do a little switcheroo with the wiring and then we'll do that now. Cool. So I've mysteriously swapped guitar. I don't know how, but it happened. How very mysterious. Yes. Um, so what we've done is we've hooked up the red box and it's worth pointing out this is a new red box and this one is called AE Plus because I know the red box AE is the one I remember, but yeah. the AE Plus, this is new. So. There's, there's less on the back. The old one, it used to have like modern, vintage, small, large cab, yeah. all that stuff, mic yeah. line. Um, whereas now it just has mic and line and on and off. And all the cab emulation comes from the front panel. Yeah. Um, and it's like you put, you hit effects access, it says cab type along the top there, and then you've got eight different cab Eight options. different cabs, yeah. So, I know, just off the top of my head, I can't remember what they are, but there's like a there's a four twelve modern, there's mm -hmm. a two twelve, there's a one by twelve like fifty seven tweed style thing. So there's there's a bunch of different cabs on there. Okay, so we'll do yeah, we'll do some a few different tones and just show you through the cabs. So I'll cool. do some cleanage. Yeah.
Yeah. There you go. You can hear quite drastically in the room, hopefully on the internet, in YouTube world, mm. you can hear the difference as well, because this is going direct to interface now. Yeah. Um, all of them sounded very, and I guess partly to do with our EQ settings, but all of the, it's very pristine sounding, very yes. clear, very yeah. crisp. Um, that might be partly to do with the presence being oh, awful. Oh yeah, quite, yeah. Um, it's a nice spanky sound, and it, they've kind of managed to emulate that. You know, sometimes when you've got a clean tone and it's slightly pushed you to the pickups, and it kind of you hear a bit of rumble, yeah, that speaker rumble yeah, almost yeah. that kind of. Yeah, you can totally hear that. Um, and as well, you can kind of. You can almost hear this, the actual sound in terms of the size of the cabinet that they've chosen as yeah. well. So there's a little bit more break up in the smaller cabinets mm. and a little bit more compression in the smaller cabinets and it seems to be a little bit brighter and wider in the bigger cabinets. Yeah. My approach when I'd be using something like that in a recording situation was I'd work out which cabs frequency-wise give me... Like, I might find the mid-heavy cab, use that for the, the, sure. the crunch. The ones that are a little bit more scooped might use for some lead or cleans, you know, that kind of thing. Um... That's how I'd approach it by just from hearing what I just heard. Yeah. At least. Um, should we do a bit of crunchage? Yeah. First cab. First cabinet, Sauvignon. <laughs> Be all cabs, right? Yeah, all of the cabs. And then I went back to seven because it sounded kind of nice, added a little bit more gain and pushed the boost in just to see how the cabs were affected. Yeah, I feel like the last few were more my cup of tea in terms yeah. of the feel and the way it sounded. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Again, it's just having the options. It you, is. you you could layer up two or three, say you double tracked two with one side of two different cabs, sorry, four different cabs in total. Yeah. Because you'll double track, yeah, layer them together. Yeah, I mean, you could really get some thick tones out of that. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, For recording, it's absolutely, it's indispensable. It sounds like they've done the whole, like, here's some high-frequency cabs, here's some sort of focus on mid-range, here's some focus on low-end. Yeah. That might not have been the approach, but you could definitely stack them together to achieve, like, a full-range tone. 100%. Yeah, definitely. Um, For reals. Let's take it away, Jaws. <laughs>
then last one. So, like you, I jumped back to Cab 7. I think that's yeah, my favourite one. I think so, me too. It has, um, when you were playing, even though I wasn't holding the guitar or playing the guitar, I could feel that it was different. Yeah. Um, it's the same when you went back to 7, there's a slight warmth and sort of circumference to the sound, like a nice warm circle. To yeah, it. I was about to say, it's a rounded kind of tone from all the low end to the high end. Yeah. I think listening to Cab 2, that was very, like, rattly almost in a very yeah. SM57 kind of way. So again, when I would be double tracking, I'd use something like Cab 7 and then double track with Cab 2 and blend it in a little bit yeah. just to get myself some chunk and then a little bit of fizz on the top for definition. Swag. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, that's it. That's Yeah, I mean, that's everything about the amp. That's the Black Spitter. That's brilliant. 200. And it's worth, I've, I've done loads of sweeps on the front panel, back panel, so you can see it's filled with features and user-friendly functions that, like I say, it's well versatile for yeah. what it is. Yeah. In terms of price point, at this point we don't know exactly, but mm. roughly around £700 mark UK. Yeah. Um, and as I say, for the feature set, 200 watts, it's not going to struggle. No. Um, if this is the kind of product you're looking for that you can tour, you, it's flexible, uh, you can use it with loads of different op applications. Um, yeah, I think that's really not a bad price for what yeah. you get. Yeah, for sure. Um, so there you go. Thank you so much using Ketna for sending this over. Thank you, Joss, for coming down, joining in, and being a sick head. Okay, yeah. um, and I hope you all enjoyed this video. You should check out Guitar Bros Demos, Joss's YouTube channel, um, where he does basically the same thing we're doing here. Um, <laughs> but obviously in a different application, yeah, different course. people, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'll put links in the description box for all that. Uh, and yeah, like, subscribe, and share. See you all very soon.